Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about Nobody Really Listens. I've been thinking about this for a long time and the comments people make on their room forums and over the telephone during our calls and just calls in general led me to believe that nobody really understands this idea or this goal of critical listening and how to get there. I mean, they're all interested in it, but they just don't know what road to go down. And I, I know it's difficult because there are all these variables linked together. So it's like a movie, you know, and you're just seeing one frame. And from that one frame, you have to extrapolate, you know, the sound quality that you want. Well, you can't because there's too many other frames in your way. And there's too many frames behind you that you didn't see. So you're not going to win this journey. You're going to end up failing. So kind of got to step back a little. And, and let's step back and listen a little bit. Of course, we know there's a difference between hearing and listening, right? Hearing is acknowledgement of the garbage truck outside. Listening is, you know, the first and second and third order harmonic of that garbage truck. How's that? There's a good way to define it. So that's what you want to look at. You want to really listen. The sound has fundamentals and harmonics. Try to find both. It's easy to find the fundamental in a garbage truck. That's the frequency that sets off the car alarms in all the cars that are parked down the streets. I know here because they do it on purpose at six o'clock in the morning. I get it. <laughs> and they have the added benefit of there's building on both sides. So the reverb really b builds up and, you know, they have that going for it and low frequency pressure and all the alarms will get set up. And I don't know how they get turned off. I guess the people that own them have to come up at 6 a.m. and shut them off. But they do finally in about 15 or 20 minutes get turned off. So it's funny. So here's the thing. You want to listen for the low, low noise floor in the room. This is so critical. I don't really know how to explain this, but having a very low noise floor just makes everything else much easier to achieve. I think that's the best way to say it. You have less effort that you have. To, you have many things to do. That doesn't change. The quantity of goals doesn't. But the difficulty, the level of difficulty of each hurdle is minimized, you know, when you, you have a low noise floor. So you've addressed all uh, low, middle, high frequency modal pressure issues and reverb issues. You've had to to get a low noise floor, right? You're not going to get a low noise floor with modal pressure peaks of plus 10, plus 12, plus 13 dB. That's not going to happen. So those all have to be dealt with. Reverb, the reflection issues have to be dealt with. Pressure and reflections, remember, those are two main categories that we have to work in, the two main paradigms. So if your noise floor is low, then, you know, you you can hear more automatically. Now, you might like what you hear, you might not, but here's the thing. What you don't like is way easier to fix now since you have a low noise floor, and it can be fixed. It's usually a treatment issue, it's usually more low-frequency treatment. It's always the case. So that's how it works. Low frequency and amplitude distortions are different on each wall. See, and you have to listen for that too. You could have 30 cycle on the side wall, you could have 40 on the front and the rear. That's a, a big deal because you got pressure wave this, pressure wave this, and you're caught in the middle of all this pressure. It's a problem, okay? It has an influence on what you hear, obviously. Uh, what do we got? Uh, low frequency amplitude, floor to ceiling. We always see this 50 to 80 cycle problem, floor to ceiling. And that's germane with 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 foot ceilings. Even 13 foot ceilings has its problems. 15 foot ceilings has its problems. 15 foot has 80 hertz. Well, in a big room, that can be a problem. It, it was in my studio. 
what did I do? I had to treat the floor. I didn't have any floor to ceiling pressure treatment, so I had to treat the floor. Did it do it all? No. But I haven't got up to uh, hanging, you know, 200 pound units from my ceiling here yet. So, but I know what has to be done. I can see it in the measurements. It's tough. Does your room sound like music? I mean, what's the goal of all of this craziness that we go through? Does your room sound like music? Is that the music you want to hear? Is that the way you want to hear your music? Is that the personality of the room? We just did a video on that. Watch that video. Are everything separate? Can you hear everything? All the instruments separate. Here's the most important time. Does every instrument sound live and die of its own volition? That means without room interference, right? Own volition is get out of my way, room. Don't impact the way I live or sound, for that matter. So that's how that works. You got to be able to do that. Is there darkness air between the notes and chords? When the fundamental stops, is there space before the harmonics start? There should be. It's the way it all works. There's time intervals between everything, fundamental, and their associated harmonics. You should be able to hear that in a high resolution room. Listen, listen for it. What do we got? All fundamentals and first four harmonics. That's a good goal. Listen for the fundamental and the four first order harmonics. There's more. If you can hear those, I just did a washboard video where there were four, four, four levels of harmonics, four orders. So you should be able to uh, watch that one too. All right, so these are some of the conclusions I've come to here. So I'm just passing them on. There's many more, but this was the first thought. We'll do some other videos, but nobody really listens. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.